The more protein you eat, the less fat you'll gain. In the last episode, I set the stage for declaring why protein is the menopause nutrient. In this episode, I'm going to bring the receipts. I'm going to show you the actual studies that, quite honestly, will shock you. Now, before we get into the research, I want to thank Hone Health for making this educational series possible. There's an entire research hypothesis which reports about pro optimizing protein intake causing us to eat fewer calories. This is known as the protein leverage hypothesis. Now, a simple definition is that we need a certain amount of protein each day. If we don't eat that amount of protein, our hunger levels or our drive to eat is going to be high. But once we meet our daily protein intake goal, we now will suppress hunger. So it's really, you're going to be hungry until you eat enough protein each day. That's the protein leverage hypothesis in a nutshell. I know what you're wondering. Is there any research on this? I've got the receipts. It was a really high quality study which put the protein leverage hypothesis to the test. Now, there's actually been a lot of studies on this. Uh, the initial studies were actually done in grasshoppers, but they've extended this into human research trials as well. In the study that just blew me away relative to the protein leverage hypothesis, Researchers gave male and female subjects three different levels of protein, low protein, moderate protein, and high protein. And they did this over 12 days. Every subject got each level of protein intake for four consecutive days. And they lived in a research facility which had a metabolic kitchen. So there was no, what I like to call, there was no Taco Bell temptations. The subjects could only eat what was provided to them. And the researchers spent an enormous amount of time, money, and resources to be able to disguise how much protein was in the food. So the subjects didn't know when they were eating, if they were eating low, moderate, or high protein. And remember, there was zero cheating in this study because they lived in the research facility where the researchers watched them constantly. At the end of the study, the researchers reported that the subjects eating low protein ate significantly more calories. In particular, they ate 12% more calories on average every day, which was 260 calories per day. So this finding supported the protein leverage hypothesis. When you eat low protein, you're more hungry. And because the subjects had access to food all throughout the study, all day long, they chose to eat more food. And when they had higher protein intakes, guess what? They were fuller. They didn't need to eat as much food. What the researchers observed in this study was that the subjects eating the lowest amount of protein ate significantly more calories. The high and moderate protein groups just weren't as hungry. They didn't eat as much. So this study clearly showed under very controlled research conditions that low protein diets cause greater hunger, which resulted in eating significantly more calories. And we know what happens when we eat more calories. We will gain excess body fat. Check out this next study that was published in the British Journal of Nutrition. This study included premenopausal women, perimenopausal women, and postmenopausal women. The age range was from 30 years old to 60 years old. The only thing the researchers did in this study was tell half the subjects to eat more protein. That was it. There was no exercise program in this study. They divided the subjects up into two groups over a 12 week period. The high protein group they ate about 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body mass per day, or about 0.8 grams per pound of body weight per day. The standard protein group didn't change their protein intake. They were eating about 0.5 grams of protein per pound of body weight, equal to about 1.1 grams per kilogram of body weight. Now let's look at what happened to their diets. 
the group that increased their protein, they went from about 70 grams per day up to 115 grams of protein per day. Now at the same time, yes, they increased their protein, but they also lowered their carbohydrates. Now this was important because that means that they didn't change their total calorie intake. The low protein group continued to eat about 70 grams of protein each day during this study. Get ready for the results of this study. This is what just blew my mind when I first read it. Remember, all they did was tell the women eat more protein. At the end of the study, the researchers reported the subjects that increased their protein gained significantly more muscle mass and lost significantly more body fat. Now I know what you're saying. You're making this up. I have the receipts. You can read this study. Specifically, the high protein group lost about two pounds of body fat or just a little less than a kilogram of body fat. The standard protein group didn't lose any body fat. In terms of lean mass, the high protein group gained nearly three pounds of lean mass, while the standard or low protein group, they didn't gain any lean mass. I wanna summarize one more menopause protein study. This study took women from an age of 50 to 80, so mostly postmenopausal women, and they put them all on a diet. But some of the subjects they told we want you to add one scoop of whey protein to your diet each day. So all subjects reduce their calories, 500 calorie deficit, half added one scoop of protein, whey protein to their diet. The other group did not add any additional protein to their diets. Importantly, there was no exercise program in this study. So in summary, this was a dieting study comparing lower versus higher protein intakes. Now this is where it gets interesting. The women who were told to add protein to their diets, guess what? They were eating more food. In fact, because they added protein to their diets, they were eating about 12% more calories per day than the group not adding protein to their diets. Now not surprisingly, because remember, all of the subjects were placed on a 500 calorie per day deficit. All of the subjects lost body fat during this study, but the group that added protein lost significantly more body fat. They lost about four pounds of body fat, while the group not increasing protein intake only lost about one and a half pounds of body fat. In terms of lean mass changes, the low protein group lost about a pound of lean body mass, while the high protein group, they didn't lose any lean mass. This is why I refer to protein as the menopause nutrient. Let's go back to our foundational principle for this entire series. Muscle equals health, excess body fat equals sickness. We know that during menopause, we start to lose muscle and increase body fat. What these studies have shown us in premenopausal, perimenopausal, and postmenopausal women is that when you optimizing protein, going from a suboptimal amount and getting it up to closer to an optimal amount can help build muscle and lose body fat. In the next episode, I'm gonna go over my recommendations for what I believe are the ideal protein intakes. And remember, if you haven't watched any of the previous episodes, go back and get all of this context. We've covered exercise, we covered what happens to the body during the menopause transition, and now we're getting into the power of protein to make your journey as good as it can be. Have you recently switched to a higher protein diet? If you have, comment below and tell me, what, what did you experience? Have, did you notice any changes in your body composition? Did you notice that you weren't as hungry throughout the day? I brought the receipts. I'm asking you to bring your friends and to subscribe to this channel.